Hey everyone, it's Matt with Jinx Brothers. This coin shortage is a real deal. And because of that, I think I want to get back into bills. And then I started to think, not everybody knows how to hunt bills. So today I figured I would make a quick video on how to hunt for things worth money and what you need to look for. So stay tuned. So you want to hunt those dollars, or I should say, really any denomination. Hunting bills can be a ton of fun. They're um, actually so much easier to get than coins, and um, there's a lot of different varieties and in, in things to look for in the bills. And, and a lot of people don't necessarily know what they should consider keeping. Uh, it can get confusing, or at least it can for me. So in this video, we're going to cover the basics. And these are the bills that um, you can probably find. Um, and when in doubt, check it out. The no-brainers are, are where I'm going to start. The first no-brainer is the low serial number. Low serial numbers generally are going to start with at least four zeros. So the number will be zero 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 and then four numbers better than that is five zeros and so forth for the four zeros you're just going to get slightly over face and they improve slightly from there to where if you can get seven zeros that's what i consider a home run that's typically going to be a 500 plus dollar bill Again, when you're hunting bills, you can hunt any denomination. I generally stick with um, dollar bills simply because they're the cheapest and the easiest to keep. If you're hunting $100 bills, that bill better be pretty special if you want to keep it. The next no-brainer is the exact opposite. It's the high serial number. That's just like the low serial number except for it has nines in the front instead of zeros. So you want it to start with at least four nines. And just like the other one, it's going to improve as the number of nines you have goes up. And the dollar amounts are about the same. The next no-brainer is the binary. A true binary is going to have just zeros and ones. But a binary from most collectors is going to be a serial number that includes just two numbers. And it can be really any two numbers. The example that I use are sevens and twos. Um, but like I said, the quote unquote true binary is going to be just zeros and ones. There's going to be some variation depending on the pattern of the number. Uh, if there's anything uh, additionally fancy about it, uh, you know, as well as the, just the way the numbers lay out. There's a lot of discrepancy as far as what dollars will be worth, but you can ge generally expect to get a, a nice profit when you're in the dollar amounts that I'm showing are based upon $1 bill hunts. The next no-brainer is one up from a binary, which is a trinary, which is just three numbers. That's generally... Uh, kind of the cutoff. A lot of people don't collect trinaries. Trinaries, for the most part, are just going to give you slightly over face value. Um, but a lot of people do collect them. They are harder to find. And sometimes when you're going through the bills, you just want to keep something. <laughs> so it's nice to have something to take home or, or to keep, I should say. After the no-brainers, we're going to get into what I'm calling the fancy bills. The first fancy bill is the ladder notes. A true ladder note is going to go from 1 to 8, or from 2 to 9, where it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But really, a ladder for the most part is going to be a consistent pattern of numbers um, that are either going up or down. A uh, true ladder, the one that would be 1 through 8 or 2 through 9, 
those are your t high ticket items. Those are the ones you really want to find. Um, but a lot of collectors will take the smaller letters that are leading with zeros or um, are ending with zeros. And on to the next one, which is the broken ladder. A broken ladder is just like a ladder, except for instead of being in a consistent pattern, it's going to start, finish, and then kind of start back up again. So I've given an example of a broken ladder where it's going, then it gets to zero, and then it starts back at one again. Some people do consider um, a broken ladder what is typically called a scrambled ladder, and that is basically no repeating numbers, um, but it does have the ladder numbers or has uh, just one of each number in it. Those aren't quite as desirable, but some people do collect them, so they certainly uh, are worth uh, keeping. The next one is the repeater. The repeater is just as it sounds. It repeats and repeats and re no, it doesn't. It just has two of the same four digit patterns. I've highlighted this to kind of show you what you need to look for. Basically, the first four numbers and the last four numbers essentially duplicate themselves. There is a slight premium to these notes, and they're certainly worth holding on to. The next one is the super repeater. A super repeater is very much like a repeater, except for it repeats more. So you're going to be repeating every two numbers. So in the example that I'm doing, it's the 72s that are repeating. So it would be that two-digit extension four times in a row. Again, the prices on this are going to be dictated based upon how important or special those numbers are and how important and special they are to the person that you might be trying to sell this to. The next fancy bill is the quad doubles. And what are quad doubles? Quad doubles are kind of like a repeater, uh, except for they are four of a kind twice. The example that I'm doing, again, are with twos and sevens. Um, and, and these are really desirable bills. So definitely hang on to those if you find them. Next on the list is the radar note. What's a radar note? Well, it starts in basically, if you want to envision it a uh, mirror between digit four and five. So it starts, goes to the middle, and then it radars back. And that's why it's called a radar note. Um, radar notes can also be fancy, on top of being fancy. And that's when you have a repeater radar or a binary radar. And those are worth even more than the original radar note. The cream of the crop is the solid note. Solid notes would be everything of one number. And these are really, really rare, and they're worth a ton of money. So if you find a solid note, definitely hang on to it regardless of condition because it's a really desirable note. Besides fancies, and I haven't covered all of them, there are other ones, but besides fancies, you want to keep your eyes peeled for star notes. What are star notes? Star notes are replacement notes. You'll know a star note because it has a star uh, at the end of the serial number. I've shown an example here of what a real star note would look like. Um, star notes can be really rare. They can be really not so rare. So your best way to do this is to grab your star notes. I personally like to keep my star notes because they are replacement notes. Um, <clears throat> but the really good place for you to go to is Currency Collections and to look them up to see how rare your note might be. And the rarer the note, the more likely you are to want to keep it. But like I said, I normally keep my star notes. I don't hunt bills that often. If I was hunting them much more often, I might be a little bit more selective with the star notes, but I think they're pretty cool. So I keep all of them. And then we come on to the honorable mentions. Like I said, there's tons of things out there. And actually this uh, video is not all encompassing, there are things that I did not list uh, either earlier on or as honorable mentions, but these are the ones that I wanted to throw in as honorable mentions. And that's the flipper. That's when you have bills that read the same either upside down or right side up. And that's typically going to include 
zeros, sixes, and nines. Some people do include the ones and eights, but they do tend to look a little bit different just based upon the way the serifs run on those two particular numbers. Um, they don't look quite the same uh, upside down as right side up, but the zeros, sixes, and nines do. There's also trailing zeros, which is a single number, followed by all zeros, and the standalone. And that's when you have all zeros with just one number someplace in there with the zeros. Um, again, when you're hunting bills, you'll find a million almosters. You'll find so many bills that if it just had this or if it just had that, and that's the fun of hunting it, is you'll find so many that you just wish had one number reversed or switched or one more of these or uh, it's fun. Uh, anyways, just because it looks special to you does not mean that that feeling will be universal. So, you know, stick by the, the, these kind of hard and fast uh, collectible type bills. Um, but if it's special to you, keep it. Uh, there's no reason not to. Uh, the, the list that I've put together here is simply kind of the hot list that collectors are typically going to look for. And you can go into coin shows or coin stores <clears throat> and they will carry some kind of, impre uh, of a premium. Anyways, when you're hunting, simply enjoy the hunt. It's a ton of fun. And the cool thing is, is if you don't find anything, it all can go back. So it just costs you the time. And if you found something cool, you might have been able to make some money. And if not, you were able to add to your collection. So I hope this uh, video was informative to you. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did. Please consider subscribing if you have not already. And I'll catch you all in the next video.